Hello, folks. Uh, welcome tonight. We're examining Guinness, the Irish brewed version, and we're going to go with Maria from New York. Hello, Maria. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jay. Hi. And we're going with Eric from California. Hey, everybody. And we're going with John from Alabama. Hello. Good evening. Good Francis evening. Good Gamble evening. And Gamble. And we got Eric from Massachusetts. Hola. Now, John contact John with beer, Zone 1. He contacted me and said that he was at a beer tasting in Louisville and he couldn't make it. No. I said, heck. Okay. Then uh, Harry said with, from England, he was going to stay up till midnight and do this, but he said he had to do this really big project for work and it was going to be all night long working on this, some kind of engineering project. I said, well, uh, obviously your job is more important than talking about some beer brand. <laughs> but we're doing the sick ward tonight because a bunch of people <laughs> thank you the sick with colds and, uh, beer is good for colds right and yeah. this beer is perfect for this uh, to beat a cold yeah. <laughs> and vitamin C probably even more now uh, yes okay does somebody want to tell the story of what's going on with this beer because we examined Guinness extra stout already but we had to do it again because now um, we, go ahead. The story that I know, and, and I'm a little defiant of the story because I have a Canadian brewed version. Good. But anyways, I guess they're trying to move their production. That now I think they made this Guinness Extra Stout and Guinness Draft for the North American region. Up, I either I think it maybe was brewed by within the Molson breweries by Guinness, and now they're trying to move most of this production of the Guinness Extra Stout back to the St. James Gate in Dublin. For many years it was brewed by Moosehead. Yes, Moosehead, not a the Canadian market. The pint bottle, right. Yeah, for the Canadian market, no, the 12-ounce uh, bottle, 12 12-ounce and the 500 milliliter, no, the 22-ounce bottle bottle. Yes, they, right. they, um For the Canadian market, it's brewed at Labatt. Okay. Which is InBev. Now, uh, but... Someone said over a year ago that they were going to end that contract with with Canada and go back to all Ireland. And I said, huh. But it never happened, so I thought, well, he got bad information. So about four months ago, I was at a store, three months ago, and I looked on the shelf, and immediately the bottle was different. You can see that our bottle is different than yours. You have that fat bottle. We have the more european size uh, design bottle. So I knew something wasn't right. Oh, Marie, you got the 22 ounce. Yeah, I got the big one. Is there a way to tell by my bottle? Yeah, because it'll say product of Ireland. Yeah, that's that's the only way, and that's what it says. Okay. So I thought something's up, so I turned and I looked at the back of the bottle, and it says um, product of, product of Ireland. And I thought, oh, this is weird. And it says malt liquor, which it's not because it's well, it's five. My bottle says malt liquor. Yeah, five, which is a meaningless term as we've learned. Exactly. It's a product of Ireland. So I looked on the website, and it was saying that it was 5% alcohol. Well, we know for years and years it was 6%. Mm -hmm. It really, really was a malt liquor. So I said, well, this is strange. So it, it's confirmed, Eric uh, of Massachusetts, in a few months or weeks, you won't see what you're getting anymore. Good. They're all going off of our shelves. They're all going. But it's a ripoff in a way because it's less alcohol. It's a smaller bottle, <laughs> but it's not a smaller price. Yeah, my bottle says it's a 12, 12 fluid ounces bottle still, which is good. And we have 11.2, or in Maria's case, 22. Oh, so they, so when they go to Ireland, they're more of the European size. Great. Correct. <laughs> oh, man. So, 33 uh, milliliters. Um, my bottle says, I'm looking at it, 33.0 no, milliliters. ML and 47 mil, okay, milliliters and 47 um, millimeters. I don't know. Yeah, but it's a 12 ounce bottle. Yeah, it's no, no, it's 11.2 ounces. 11, sorry. So then, uh, you know, I did a blind taste test, and it turns out I prefer the Canadian version, which shocked me to no end. Nice. But let's go with Maria first because. Uh, Maria, before you start talking, I was doing some research, and they said that this beer that we're drinking, except for Eric in Massachusetts, Thomas Metal. And Eric Anderson. Eric Anderson, you still have the, the Canadian, Canadian yeah, one? Mine is also brewed in Canada. 
Well, that is bad news. Mine says <laughs> okay, so. imported by Diago Guinness USA, Nora, Connecticut, product of Ireland, brewed in Ireland, Guinness and Company, St. James Gate, Dublin. Yeah, yeah, Diageo. Um, Diageo. Yeah, sure. It's based. Now listen, what they're saying. It's based on a beer that was first brewed in 1821, and they originally called it Guinness Porter. So it's kind of like, well, and we know a porter and a stout are really sort of like the same thing, right? A stout porter is like a stronger porter, but um, yes. Guinness originally was called Guinness Porter. They, they still make one in England. All right, now, Maria, you've had the Irish brewed before? I have. I had it in Ireland. When I went to Ireland, the, the beer that I had every time I had a beer was Guinness, and nothing I ever had in the United States matched. What I what I remembered or what I thought I remembered. This is more of what I thought that I remembered. I mean, the color is impeccable. You know, it's got a beautiful uh, mahogany hue. It's just it's it's verging on black, and then there's that garnet hue in the center. So the clarity is good. The head was luscious and creamy, but this has a lovely roasty roasty nose with light chocolate. It's complex on the nose, right? There's um. There's maltiness, but there's also um, like a light dark fruit scent. There's nuts and like bitter walnut. I mean, this just sings to my nose. And and I can't say that I really remember what the Canadian version was like. So I, you know, it could just be that I'm I'm ushering in the the Irish brewed version of Guinness, but I think it smells terrific. Yeah. And, and, and we're going to go to the Canadian versions last, not for any particular reason, just because we started with the Irish. Uh, Jean, have you, Jean, have you had it before? I've had it before, and um, kind of similar to what Maria is saying. I mean, just when you look at this beer, um, just the look of it, it, you know you're really drinking something that's very exquisite. And um, this beer... Um, you know, strangely enough, we know we've heard so many things how people use this uh, for recipes and whatnot, but and the health benefits. But in the Caribbean, this beer within the Caribbean community, and 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 uh, Thomas Metal, Eric, you probably can know attest this, attest to this, particularly up there around Boston. Mm -hmm. This beer amongst the West Indian community, the Jamaicans, the Haitians, whatever you know, Trinidadians. This is by second to probably behind. Heineken and Red Stripe is probably the go-to beer that many tend to drink because of you know those things. It, it, it's this texture, it, it's 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 full-bodied and it and of course just you think you're drinking you know uh, it's not sweet but it's just just right you know and um, it was one of my beers that my dad drank a lot and uh, it's uh, it's 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 awesome. And Jean. Um, I was looking at the, the Haitian website for their brewery. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember. The, the Prestige, name. Prestige. The Prestige beer? That's their main brand. But I can't right. remember the name of the brewery. But uh, they produce Guinness down there under contract. Right. And I think it's like the 8%. They don't play around with the 5% stuff in Haiti. Was the foreign extra stout? Is that what it's called? Yes. Either it's the foreign extra stout or it's one called... Uh, West Special export, which is oh, okay. one that you really cannot get, and they have a different type bottle over there in Haiti. It's a different, it's a, it's like a little squat, that's cool. strange looking little. Yeah, it's like a Coors squat bottle. You know those Coors little squatty bottles yes. those, for the Coors banquet beer. I've seen those. Yeah, they call them. Uh, there's a name for them, but it's like that. Well, anyway, I'll give you my assessment, and then we'll go off to Eric and Eric. Well, I love the head. And I love the lacing. It's got that beige head and lacing. It's black, really. I guess if I was out in the sunlight, it would be reddish brown, but very dark, dark, dark brown. I mean, look at that. But the nose is where it's really interesting. It's it's almost like peat moss. Um, there's like a peat. There's a, a smokiness. I noticed this right off the bat. It has a smoky aroma that I've never had encountered before with the Canadian brood. It's it's almost like I'm picking up black cherries, some kind of black fruit. I'd still agree with that with the Canadian, yes. Yeah, yeah black cherries. 
Maybe not so much the smokiness, but I definitely agree with the black cherries. Maybe anise, like you would have in the black licorice. Mm -hmm. Definitely dark brown bread crust. This beer is not a craft beer in the sense that it's a macro mass-produced item that's sold and made in over 50 countries, right? So it's not like you can't get it. But it's so well done. It's a dynamite product, in my opinion, but I guess I'm jumping the gun. Uh, well, what I really notice, um, having, the, having the Canadian version, um, what I really notice out of the aroma, first and foremost, cheers, Eric Anderson. What, what I notice first and foremost is definitely over the Guinness draft, it does have that dark cherry or dark kind of a, a raisiny kind of a kind of a note yeah. to it, more so than Guinness draft. And it's definitely, I can tell it's kind of got a unique kind of a yeasty, a yeast kind of a quality to it. Maybe that's almost giving it that that dark brown bread, raisin bread kind of a scent to the beer. Um, there is that coffee, the light roasted coffee notes, and some bittersweet chocolate. Um, but it's, but I mean, it, it it's it, it's pretty robust without it being really bitter or over the top or anything like an imperial stout. But you definitely know it's a little bit heavier of a beer than a standard uh, Irish dry style stout for sure. Right, and I like what you said, raisin bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you it's almost not, get that feeling from the taste as well. And almost. people will say you could stand a spoon up in it. It's so, I hear an echo, it's so um, strong and all that. It is not that strong. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it seemed like it was a little bug out. Um, now, off to Eric of California. Yeah, I mean, this is a good beer. I actually don't really like, uh, like, in a strap. I don't like the. This is my favorite Guinness, and uh, I would, I used to get this fairly often. Actually, um, I've been mixing it. You know, I've been uh, using it as a chaser for this Jameson. I th really think that this uh, is goes incredibly well with whiskey. It is like the number one choice of chaser to uh, a shot of uh, Jameson would be nice. in this extra stout. I mean, to me, that's like its strongest thing. You know. Um, it's, got it's got enough of a colder taste to hold up to the whiskey, is what you're saying? Yes. It, it complements the aftertaste very well. It, uh, it it does kind of overpower the alcohol flavor. This really, as opposed to a lot of like Imperial Stouts or other kind of beers, there's really no alcohol flavor to it. It's just a very strong, like, malty, but not too sweet, like a double bock or something. It's just that strong, malty flavor. Uh, good base. I mean, the mouthfeel isn't like too heavy. It's, it's not like I mean, I could even uh, like it a little bit thicker, but um, it's you know, what what everyone's saying. I mean, it's uh, very very. I mean, I get very slight chocolate. I mean, I've had other stouts where they kind of hit you over the head with the chocolate. Here, I feel it's it's much more subtle. Uh, same thing with the coffee. I think they're both really good though, um, and it all just kind of comes together. I think it's a, it's a you know. The smell, everything, it's a, it's a good beer. Uh, the, uh, I love the uh, the darkness of the head. It has good lacing. Smell right off the bat. As soon as I crack that beer, I got that smell. Like, immediately it hit me. Yeah. Now, yeah, it, I wish you could be trying this Irish brood, which, ha which has that peated... Um, yeah? Yes. That's really something. Well, what I'm going to have to do is... Uh, Maybe buy one now and then wait. You're saying that it's going to be national, right? So I'll just wait for like wait it over and I'll do side by side. You could go to the store this weekend and all of a sudden they're putting it on the shelves, okay? That's how fast it happened here. Damn. And, and when I went into the store, they were putting the, 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 Canadian, uh, the Irish Guinness on the shelves. And I saw that they still had some of the 12-ounce Canadian versions. So I said, well, I'm not missing this chance. So I yep. bought the Canadian bottle, and I bought the uh, Irish bottle at the same time because I didn't want to – I said, I, I know what's going to happen, and now they're gone. I mean, they are gone. Guinness, wow. the, Guinness, I'm telling you, and they did not pull those bottles. They just pushed them to the front so they could sell them. Guinness I, sells pretty regularly. You know, Guinness is a strong seller. They didn't have to pull them. They just let them sell down. Yep. If, 
you know, this beer, I think, is the best entry-level stout. Like, right, like... I agree, Eric. I agree. You get, but also, it's actually really good. It, it exemplifies stouts very well. It's If you're just trying to show someone, all right, throw down three, to, three bucks and have a stout. Like, this is the one. I mean, the other one that I would probably go to is, is maybe like a, a Samuel Smith stout, you know, is, is exceptional. Um, a little bit more, though. You're paying like an extra dollar or something for that. Now, and most of the stouts today, guys, would you agree, they're all probably, you know, the ABV on those are probably like seven or eight more. I mean, in terms of the, the, AB, yeah, the alcohol by volume it compared depends. to this one. It depends because you can get the Bellhaven, which is 4%. And then there's a Bell Haven that comes in a different container that's like seven and a half. So it's really kind of strange. Bell Haven. Uh, I don't remember Bell Haven having a stout. Maybe I haven't seen it, or maybe I'm forgetting it. Is there an is there a name, or is it just called Bell? Like Bell Haven Black Irish Stout, I think it's called. It's a really old brand too. And then don't forget about Murphy's Irish Stout. Oh, that's a beer. But isn't that beer creamier? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. A nitro. Well, wait yeah. now. Wait now. Yeah. As the widget, yes. The nitro, that's a draft. And by the way, Guinness draft, a lot of people don't know this, and I heard Eric saying drought, but it's really D-R-A-U-G-H-T is like the old way of spelling draft. Yeah. But um, that beer was not introduced until 1958. Hmm. So until 1958, which sounds like a long time ago, but we're only talking about not even 60 years ago, um, when we're talking about Guinness, we're going back to 17, what, 69? So uh, that's a new item. And the, and the widget can only came out around 1992, so it's really not that old. But up until then, you could get Guinness in bottles. That was it. Yeah. So um, I guess the last question, and we'll go around the horn again, as they say on TV, would you... Would you buy this beer again? Of course. Maria? Absolutely, and I have bought it many times. But I have to say that um, the fact that this one is drinking, like um, Eric said, like a dry stout, you know, with that little bit of char, that dry roastiness, yeah. um, the beautiful fullness from the caramel. I like this one. I would buy this one again um, in a heartbeat. And I've been buying the other one. So if I bought the other one, I'm going to buy this one twice as much because I like it twice as much. Awesome. Yeah, my daughter was in Ireland last year, and she said she was having so much fun drinking Guinness, but she said she was even more interested in drinking Murphy's because they stayed mostly in Cork, and Cork is the Murphy's town, and she yep. said they, they were just, like, luxuriating with, with Murphy's. I have a little special treat before we go to Jean. My second beer of the night, and my last, by the way. I only drink two beers on Wednesday. Um, I figured I, I couldn't resist. I had to buy it. Yeah. I've seen oh, that. God. I've seen the bottles of that at Rouse's, and I wanted to grab one. I'd say, well, let me uh, come pay to I'll <laughs> get that next time. So the foreign extra, yep. That has, um, on Beer Advocate, that has extremely high reviews. Yeah, what is the score? It's like a it's 94, I think. Seven and a half percent alcohol, folks. Um, well, now to Jean. Would you, this is such a ridiculous question, but we always ask that at the end. Would you buy this beer again, Jean? Uh, without question. I mean, you, how can you not? This is the beer that, like I said, when not before I became a legal drinking age. This is the beer. Like I said, my dad had this, my mom had this, and I would, you know, have a little sip here and then, you know. About the time I turned 19, I said okay, and I grabbed one from his stash and enjoyed it. It's it's a it's a it's a world, it's a world renowned, very exceptional beer. I mean, how can you not? I mean, yeah, I'll buy it again, again and again and again. Yeah, and don't forget about that uh, another Diageo brand from the islands called Dragon Stout. Uh, I've heard of Dragon Stout. Yes, yes. That comes from Jamaica. Yeah. And it's older than Red Stripe. It was the first beer that they made down there. Um, it's older than Red Stripe. Boy, what a jewel that is! And I'm my, sure that will be found mostly in my in up up where Maria is and around the Northeast and New York and New Jersey, where there's a lot of 
us there, <laughs> living there, that would definitely. They had some people here. come into the store, and they yeah. were saying, uh, do you have dra Dragon Stout? We, <laughs> they said, we're not from here. We're from another country. And huh. they said, we always drink Dragon Stout. And then the, the manager was like, oh, we don't have that beer. And they said, you ever heard of Dragon Stout, Ronald? They call me Ronald. I said, have I heard of it? I said, heck yeah, I've heard of it. It's awesome. But yeah. um, And then I love Lion Stout from Sri Lanka. Oh, my Hell goodness. yes. Okay, but anyway, before we start off on some long discussion about all the stouts that we love, um, right. we could do that. my question, would I buy it again? Uh, yeah, I mean, come on. I just couldn't even resist buying the foreign extra style. What do you think? <laughs> Which says malt liquor, by the way, and it is for sure a malt liquor, this one. This will this will uh, take care. You won't drink it. It'll drink you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cheers yes. to that. And it'll help you get over a cold. As they oh, yeah. say in the folklore, I am not a medical doctor. Okay, this man over here <laughs> drinking Jameson. Okay, Aaron. Not Jameson is Jameson Select Reserve Black Barrel. Oh, oh excuse yeah. Me. Excuse me. Uh, and I believe Jameson is made also by Diageo. Huh. So it pairs well because it's made by the same people. Okay, uh, Eric and Eric, would you buy this? This five percent, if you ever saw it. Well, that's a ridiculous question, also. Eric, would you like to go first, or should I? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll take the reins here initially. Uh, I think this Canadian version, and we have done the Canadian version once already, uh, a couple of maybe a year ago. So this is my uh, revisited of the Canadian version, and I don't revisit it enough for whatever reason because I think maybe there's so many other beers to try out there. That's just the craft beer guy that I am, but. I had no problem picking this up. I think a six pack of these things for nine ninety nine is is an absolutely good price for the kind of a beer you're getting, the kind of a quality of beer you're getting. I'm gonna agree with Eric Anderson where he says this is a good stout to introduce somebody to stouts with because it's got a pretty rich, robust, bold flavor, but it's not so much in in, in the imperial style where it's too overboard. It doesn't have too much of, of a boozy flavor. It doesn't have too much of a bitterness flavor. I think you're getting the the true Irish type of an experience out of this beer entirely. It does have a medium to me mouthfeel, but it is on the light side of medium. But even though it is on the light side of medium, it still has a lot of rich, complex flavors, and it's very complex compared to Guinness Giraffe, so I would definitely recommend buying it, and it's a good value. Boy, you said it. Hey, I like how Eric will do. Like, he'll say a lot of stuff, but he'll say it, like, fast. But he won't say it in a stupid way. He'll just, like, he has this ability to summarize everything, like, brrrr. Amen. And I can't do that. But um, maybe that's why I've always watched Massachusetts Beer Reviews. Thanks. Not to mention Beer and TV Ramble and Maria Devon, the girl next door, which y'all know I'm always... Watching and look, it, let me say this to you: If I don't watch your video, it's not because I don't like your video. It's because if you're drinking a beer I've never had, I don't watch the video because I cannot relate to it. I can, I never watch videos for beers I've not had, because I mean, what's the point? Up uh, and now, if I'm getting ready to drink it, yeah, I'll watch it. I want to see what people are saying about it, and then I'll when I drank this new beer, I'll see if it matches. Um, now I'm about to step up my game, and before we go on to the last topic. I want to. I have stepped up my game with the foreign extra stout. Quick, the, Eric Anderson, what is your oh, thoughts on this? Oh, I'm sorry, I would have it again or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I'm not even drink. I'm not even drinking Guinness. I mean, uh, James. <laughs> I'm four shots in, motherfucker. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love it. I love it. Love I'm sorry. it. I'm sorry to the. I'll put a dollar in the oh, square jar. I screwed it's up. It's all good, my friend. It's all good. It's That's all good. good. Just got banned from the show. But anyway, <laughs> many dollars. Um. All right. So, uh, yes, I would buy it again. I would not. Uh, like, I, I can't imagine myself drinking a whole six pack in one night, like all Guinness. My thing about Guinness is it's outstanding. Like a twenty-two ounce bottle is perfect. That. With uh, with like Jameson, I mean, you can just you can just drink all night. If I'm if I'm drinking Jameson on the rocks, 
one glass of it is going to last me, you know, 15 minutes, maybe even th I sip it slowly, you know. But when I'm taking shots and then drinking Guinness, I get faded real quick because I'm drinking like <laughs> off one on. bottle of Guinness, I can take like seven shots. <laughs> it is dangerous. Um, yeah, but I, I really like it as a as a little treat. I think drinking too much at once, like it wouldn't be my like go to, but it's something that's really really enjoyable once in a while in a small portion. But yeah. uh, and, I, and you're sort of like a hobbyist drinker, right? Like, well, I don't know. What do you mean by hobbyist? I mean, well, a hobbyist I, is as a hobbyist is somebody that has a hobby. And so, what do you yeah. do? A hobby? You indulge in it a lot, like um. Yes, yes, I yes, I do. I mean, I, and I mean, I guess I'm more drinking generally. You know, the IPA is is true. I I drink, or if I'm going to drink a stout more often, I'm going to pick an imperial stout. But if I'm going to be comparing it like with alcohol. I'd actually rather have a Guinness and an Imperial Stout, most likely. I wouldn't want, you know, uh, the Guinness is perfect with Jameson. So I mean, it's all everything has its place, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I do, I do drink a lot, and I, I do. I'm always, you know, I'm one of you guys. I'm a beer reviewer. I like to drink beer. Yes, I think that should be fairly obvious by now that I'm a beer hobbyist. <laughs> right. I didn't say. I didn't say. Nothing drink. wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I didn't say drink a lot. I said you were a hobbyist or an enthusiast. Now, is, this, is the Guinness? Okay. I, I'm wondering, is the Guinness Extra Stout meant to be served extra cold, like the Guinness Draft, or what was the serving no. recommendation? No, you? I don't know, but I think it's it it should be a little bit on the warm side, right? Uh, I agree. Okay. I have mine in my little wine cellar. I have which, you know, I I now I, I very rarely put wine in there. I mostly put beers because the wines I drink mostly is reds, but um. I put it in there, and the temperature was about 50, 52 degrees or so when I before we started this review. I had this in there since uh, since this morning, and um, it was perfect. I think to me, because that was the question I was going to ask, because my dad, you know, he had his, you know, in the freezer. You know, I guess he had it ice cold, but to me, I think it's better when it's in the, in that that degree range of 45 to 52 degrees. I think. Yeah, and and the, and oftentimes viewers. Will ask me what what are some good food pairings? Not that I'm any kind of food expert, but I always forget. Like almost always, I'll forget to talk about foods that would go well with the beer. I just can't remember. Like when I'm doing the reviews, I'm trying to keep things together, and I just cannot remember. But anybody have any ideas of what before we shut this off of like foods you think would go well with Guinness or I don't think, I mean, first so, of all, I mean. My big thing about Guinness also is that I put it in the food that I'm cooking very often. Like, yes. I mean, you can marinate food in Guinness. I've marinated chicken in Guinness. I've made Guinness pot pies. I mean, yes. Guinness in food, a lot, that is excellent. But, I mean, it also... Chili, like a chili hearty. That's what I was going to say, yeah, chili. chili. And um, another thing that sticks out in my brain, I'm not trying to do, um, you know, typical kind of Irish food here because that would be way too obvious, but... Something that sticks into my brain would definitely be, besides steak, would definitely be like a, a nice pot roast or maybe even like meatloaf. Yes. Comfort type foods would be awesome with this beer. Yeah. Some mashed potatoes. Yeah. Oh, well, boy. Gravy. With a lot of onions and gravy. Oh, oh yeah. Steak sandwich. Guinness gravy, though. You can put the Guinness right in the gravy and it'll be great. Right. Oh, yeah. You got that right. Now, <laughs> With some of those empanadas, you know, with some really spicy uh, ground beef in there and some uh, different peppers. Now, Maria, is that Guinness helping you feel a little better with that cold? I'm feeling okay with my cold. Um, I, I, enjoy the, I enjoy the dry stout. I really do. I like the roastiness. I like the, I like the, the boldness of it. Um, when I go to have a stout, if I can have one that's got – you know, complexity and flavor and isn't 12%, then that's good. Yeah. So I like this very much. I, it's not going to make me feel better, though. It's not going to keep me from having a cold. <laughs> oh, right. if it would, that would be great, but I doubt it. Yeah, so in other words, it's kind of a wash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking this is going to put me to sleep, so that's yeah. good. Well, what do you think? Any, any ideas on food pairings? I would put it with steak and potatoes or with stew. Red meat, beef is good. Um, uh, it's it's very roasty. So I mean, 
Yeah. It would go with anything from a hamburger, uh, Mexican food it would complement um, very easily. And it, you could even use it as an after dinner beer or as a or as a you know, as a dessert beer. You could pair it with chocolate as well. So I mean it could go it could go from your meal right through to dessert. A chocolate tort, like a yeah, chocolate tort sort of thing like that. Even I mean, like just dry chocolate biscuits, you know, or or I mean, it it just it doesn't have a tremendous amount of chocolate flavor, but it's got that light little bit of char. So you would want to bring in stuff like, um, who was saying cherry, chocolate covered cherries, or black forest cake, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Put it with your coffee and your espresso, and this would be the perfect beer to have on your dessert table. I think oh, John okay. Sharon or I think John Sharon or uh, our buddy, we don't see a whole bunch from Philadelphia there, uh, Patrick O'Connell. I think they will both agree that this might go well with a nice hand rolled cigar. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Patrick is always talking about he's going to join us, but then he never does. Hey, what about like red velvet cake with cream cheese dressing with pecans in it? Amen, brother. Yeah. Just an idea. No. Okay. I definitely agree with that like this is, is a kind of beer to pair with something like that, absolutely. And um like I said, especially since this one is not overly sweet, that's that's a benefit actually. Yeah, you're right. You are one hundred percent right. I agree with that. I think well, we're gonna close this out. We've been on for thirty minutes. I love Guinness. And I love this Guinness Foreign Extra Stout, 7.5% alcohol. It is what? dynamite. I don't know how. And I, I, this is what just boggles my mind. I get on Facebook and uh, beer at, yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful label, Maria. And I, I like it. I get on Facebook and beer advocate and uh, uh, rape beer and all. And then you have people saying, I hate Guinness. That's garbage. It's like, how what? could somebody say? How they could don't know what they're talking about. Just, ah, uh, eesh. Oh boy. Garbage. <laughs> Garbage. I mean, it's their opinion. They have a right to say it, but the last thing I ever thought of when I drank Guinness was that it's garbage or low quality. No way. Uh-uh. Listen, I'm a beer snob, and I am very often the one person that's like, this is shit when everyone else is. Oh, swear <laughs> jar. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, Maria, Maria is a witness. I even swore one time on air, huh, Maria? You did. Mm. Uh-oh. Oh, real deal. Two in a row, though. That's bad. Bad news. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, Where's your money? What was I saying? <laughs> you're a beer like snob. Well, you're, saying, yeah. you're the beer I, snob, and you're like the most, you're the first person in line to talk about how a beer is trash. But, but I actually yeah. really do like this Guinness. I actually don't like Guinness dra Draft, but I I really do like Guinness Extra Stout. I think it's an excellent beer. I think it's well made. I think it's well priced. I think it's great where it is. I think there's a solid niche and purpose for it. I highly enjoy drinking it. It's a very good beer. Um, so yeah. Awesome. And and has anyone on this panel ever not had the Foreign Extra Stout? Um, I can't remember. I can't recall having it. I don't know if I have. I might have. I don't well, know. I've the, the draft, the, the the new one, and I haven't found the foreign extra. Um, oh my my! If you ever this this foreign extra stout, seven point five percent alcohol, as I keep emphasizing, was two dollars and twenty five cents for one bottle. I'm telling you right now, if you uh -huh. ever see it, you have got to buy it. It, it, it is going to take Guinness to another level, okay? You you are going to go up to another, well, I can't even talk right now, but it's going to take you up to <laughs> whatever that word is, some level that is higher than the level that you were previously. A whole nother level. <laughs> a couple of percentage points higher. That that statement there. Okay, so, um, <laughs> and I didn't even drink but half of it. Okay, so, but, uh, but really, it's 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 fantastic. Okay, well, this was really interesting. I wish John could have joined this, John Sharon, because I think John Sharon would have been bragging on this beer high and low. I agree. And I I'm gonna call him out, and I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out, John Sharon. Beer at Zone One Beer. You gotta make a video for the Irish Brewed Guinness. Do it. He'll probably do it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video production. And y'all come on down to California and Louisiana and Alabama and New York and Massachusetts.
See you. See you, everybody. Bye bye. Good night, folks. Y'all come. Y'all come on back real soon now. <laughs>